Interference patterns show up very small path length differences as bright and dark patches, whose spacing can be measured. Because they show up tiny differences in a fraction of wavelength, and wavelength is a very small amount for light, they're often used for very precise measurements. And there are many different types of interferometers with different geometries. What they all have in common is a part where a light ray is split and sent along two different paths and then get recombined onto a screen. One variety is the Michelson interferometer that has historic significance we will talk about soon. First, let's look at how it works. Light comes from a source and hits the mirror M0 that is at 45 degrees. This is called a beam splitter, sometimes called a half-silvered mirror, because it transmits half the light and reflects the other half. The ray that reflects travels up to mirror M1, reflects off it, and then half of it will transmit through to the observer at the telescope. The ray leaving the source on the left that passes straight through the 45 degree beam splitter travels to mirror 2 and bounces back. Half of it is then reflected off the beam splitter and also reaches the telescope. The two rays have followed different paths and are now recombined at M0 and form an interference pattern. The condition for maxima and minima in the pattern depend on the path length difference between the rays. The thing about this interferometer is that one of the mirrors is movable so that the path length difference can be changed by turning a knob. Every time the mirror moves by a quarter of a wavelength, the return trip increases by a half wavelength, and so the interference pattern shifts by one half fringe. If the mirror is moved by half a wavelength, the return trip is now longer by a full wavelength, and so the fringes will have shifted by a full wave. If you know how far the mirror has moved and have counted the number of fringe shifts, you can use that to measure the wavelength of the light. The interferometer can also be used to measure the refractive index of a material. So now, instead of having one of the mirrors able to move, we put a material in one of the arms that has a known length, and we want to know the refractive index. So once again, the optical path length of one arm will have changed. So if you place a sample in one of the arms and count the number of fringes that the pattern moves, then you can calculate the refractive index of material by working out the phase shift from that material. So we're going to watch a Michelson interferometer being used to measure the wavelength of light from a laser. You're going to use the data to calculate the wavelength yourself. <laughs> 